Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. In this video, we're going to start talking about adding graphics to our platformer game using sprite sheets. So it's time to start thinking about adding some graphics to our game. Now, if you watched the shmup video, you know we made a folder and we put a lot of different images in there and we loaded those and used them as uh, our sprite images. And that's fine, that's a, that's a simple way to do it. But a lot of times, uh, you have a lot of art for your game. You might have a lot of different images, and that image folder can get very full. It also can start to be a performance problem, because every time you load an image off the disk, uh, you're taking a chunk of time. You know, that's a, that's a slow process. So the fewer times you have to read data off the disk, the better for performance or for, in this case, uh, loading, right? Because this would be at the beginning of the game loading all the graphics. Um, so the way that uh, programmers solve that is by using something called a sprite sheet. So I have here the jumper pack uh, from Kenny Game Art, which I'll link to in the notes below. Um, and this is a nice little pack with lots of art in it. Um, if we look at the little sample, it's got uh, player sprites, it's got lots of obstacles and enemies and platforms and coins and all the stuff that you might need um, to make a little jumper game like we are. And so if you look at the preview, he's included all of these graphics, right? And so that's a lot of, that's a lot of art. And so you could go in here and load the individual images for all the different actions of the players and, and all the different items and so forth and so on. But again, that's going to start to fill up your folder with lots of art. Right? So the way we solve that is with this. There's something called a sprite sheet. And a sprite sheet has all of the images collected in it all together. Um, and so we load this one image. So we only have one load off the disk. And then we, in our program, slice it up into the parts we need. When I need the coin image, I just go and find the coin image and grab this little chunk of the sprite sheet and make that the image for my coin sprite. And if I want this platform, I cut that one out, etc. So I've copied the sprite sheet into my image folder here in my in my folder where I'm where we're building the the jumper game and so I have my sprite sheet you can preview it right there um, and then I also have this included along with it is an XML file and if we look at this XML file you can see that it's just a list of each of the images and where it's located in the sprite sheet so which what the X and Y coordinate of its top left hand corner are and how wide each image is and how tall each image is. So you can go through here and find um, which of the images you want. All right. So if I want the player's uh, ready image, I would cut out from 614, 1063 with a width of 120 and a height of 191. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And we'll t as we go through the process, we'll see how it works. Okay, so we're going to go over here to our sprites file where we were defining our various sprites. And while technically this isn't a sprite, I'm going to stick it in here because it's another class we're going to define. We're going to define a sprite sheet class. And what this sprite sheet class is going to do is, you know, load the image um, and let us and give us a, a way to slice it up into the parts we want. So this is a utility class for loading and parsing sprite sheets. Now, if you're not familiar with the word parsing, parsing means um, reading through a data file and uh, understanding what it means. Um, you know, for example, if we, you were trying to read a file that was written in English and you wanted to um, understand the grammar, that's what parsing means. So in this case, what we're doing is taking the sprite sheet and understanding how to break it up into the pieces uh, that you need. So the 
init for this class is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to pass it the file name that we need to load. And then we'll call it the we'll call it the sprite sheet. This is just pygame.image.load. Uh, we're going to load the file name and convert it. Okay. And so then we need to define a get image command. And that, what that's going to do is let us tell it an X, a Y, a width, and a height <clears throat> for what chunk of the sprite sheet we want. Now, you might be thinking, you know, we could go and if we look at this XML file that came with the sprite sheet, we could set it up so that we read all of this. And then if I want the... Um, a particular image out of it, I could say, you know, if I want, you know, bunny one ready, I could just say, give me bunny one ready, and it reads from this file what location to use. And that would be very functional. The problem is, um, so I'm not going to do it that way because if you decide to use a different sprite sheet, you may find you go and get a sprite sheet online and the artist who made it didn't include an XML file with it. And then you'd have to go and generate this, which could get kind of tedious. Um, it might come with a text file. It might come with, you know, some other format. There's listing listing where the different parts are. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just manually specify these things, at least the first time through here. And we'll talk about um, different ways you could do it, but we're going to stick with that for now to keep it more flexible for whatever you might be using. So we tell it what part of the image we want. So this function, we'll go ahead and document this. We'll grab an image out of a larger, larger sprite sheet. Okay, so we're gonna make a little surface to put this image on. And that's, it's gonna be the size we want. So it's gonna be the size we specify. And then we're just going to blit onto that onto the image um, a chunk of the sprite sheet and the chunk we want so we want to blit it in the corner of the image and the chunk we want is the chunk specified by the uh, rectangle oops, that we specified okay so we take this chunk of this sprite sheet and we Split it onto this image at this location. Okay, and then we can return that image. So now I'll just say, you know, get image, whatever we want, and that will be our image that we get back. Okay, so now we can go and tell our game to load that. And so I'm going to go in here to our settings and just define what the name of my sprite sheet file is. SpriteSheetJumper.png, and then I can go over here to the main, and in our load data section is where we're going to do this. Now, our image file is in the image folder, so we need to define that image folder. All right, so we know what it, what folder all the images are in, and then we're going to load. Okay, so the sprite sheet for our game is going to be one of our sprite sheet objects, and all we need to pass it is the file name. The file name is going to be the file name joined with the image dir. And to keep it simple, we need to put that in here. So we're going to join, we're going to join the image dir with the sprite sheet image that we specified okay and then now we'll go over here and load one of these and oh in case you didn't notice I just noticed that I typed pygame here instead of PG which is going to give us an error message okay and now we can run this and make sure we don't have any typos okay now obviously we're not going to see any graphics yet all right so let's go over here to our player and let's change this into 
one of our images. So if we go over here and look at the art pack individually, you can see what some of the graphics look like. Um, so we're going to use this little bunny for our player. And to start with, I'm just going to use the stand one, right? We can obviously animate it walking and do all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, to start with, I just want to load this ready one and make this my player. So bunny one ready. And if we go look at our sprite sheet here, bunny one ready, these are the coordinates for it. Right. So I'm going to just copy that so I don't have to go back. And self.image here, we want to use the game sprite sheet and say get image. And in the parentheses of get image, uh, we want to put those four numbers, which I just copied and pasted. So I'm going to just stick them in here and replace the commas. And then we should be good to go. Okay, so we got the image and we need to not fill it with yellow. So now we should have our player being the sprite we want. So let's take a look. Okay, so here's our big giant sprite. So two problems we have. One is it's a lot bigger than the sprites we've been using so far the little rectangle we defined. So we have a size problem and we also need to do the set alpha on the background and fix the background problem. Okay, fixing the black border is very easy. We just need to go in here and say self.image.setColor key. Okay, now the size issue is a little different, right? So we know that this is bigger than we want to be and if we actually go and looked at the the image, all of these images are pretty large, which is nice because it makes it flexible. You can use them in whatever size you want, but um, we want to resize them. We're going to want to resize all the ones we're using so that they all kind of fit together. So we could just resize this sprite sheet. But the problem with resizing the sprite sheet is as soon as we do this, as soon as we do that, all these images um, aren't going to be at the same locations in the same sizes so all these numbers won't work anymore and we won't know where the individual images are and it'd be a lot of work to go through and replot out all of these locations so what we're going to do to keep things simple is resize them uh, after we load them so we could resize it right here and say when we load the player we resize it but then we'd also need to resize it when we load the platforms and etc etc right that can get kind of annoying so what we're going to do is in the get image, we're just going to automatically resize it when we load it. So, so we could do that here. We could just say pg.transform.scale our image. Now when you scale an image, when you use the scale transform, you have to specify the new width and height. You can't just say divide by two. So we could say width divided by two, height divided by two. So make everything half the size, okay? So so it says load, get this image, it gets the image and scales it, then sends back the scaled image. And so that's good. So let's see how that looks now. Okay, ah, now we got an error message here. And if you look at what that is, it says integer argument expected got float. What does that mean? Well. My height is 191. 191 divided by two is not a integer. It is a fraction. So because we're working with pixels, the scale command wants a an integer number for the width and height. So we need to round these or truncate these to integers. And the quickest way to do that is using the double slash operator, which all that does is divide by, you know, divide and truncate the fraction into an integer, truncates the decimal part. So that'll give us, that should give us whole numbers. And then we can run it and we should have a half size little bunny. Okay, so that looks a little better. We're now working with sprite sheets. 
Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. We're now uh, working with sprite sheets, loading them and cutting images out. In the next video, we'll start to work with some more graphics and uh, improve the platforms, and then we can start animating the character so that we're using some of these uh, some of these nice animation frames to make it look nice, and then we can go from there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.